Hello, and welcome back to Junk Botics. My name is Andrew. Now that you have a chassis built for your robot, you'll need to provide it with a source of power. While you could just drop a battery in place and wire it up, it's better to plan how you're going to position things and route wires before you begin. Doing so can help you determine what you need for the power requirements of your robot, while also gaining an idea of how things will look once it's all assembled. Your robot will also be safer and cleaner looking during operation, while maintenance, updates, and expansion will be easier to implement in the future. For my chassis, I'll use one of these 12 volt 7 amp hour batteries. They are inexpensive and robust, and one should provide plenty of power, though there is space for a second one if I need it. I'll place the battery here, just behind the rear drive wheels. It will be secured to the chassis with a custom made hold down strap. The front area of my chassis will be reserved for future cargo. I'll use this 30 amp breaker in line with this fuse block to distribute the 12 volts from the battery to each load. The main load will be the motors, so each will have its own 25 amp fuse and branch circuit. Secondary loads will include the embedded controller and various active sensors like this GPS and compass. Also included will be a flashing beacon light for safety purposes. These will each have their own lower amperage fuses and circuits. The main breaker includes this handy reset, which I'll use as the main power switch. Following the fuses, for each branch there will be an LED connected to act as a visual indicator that it's getting power and that none of the fuses are blown. Each circuit branch will also include an inline switch after the fuses so that portions of the system can be enabled or disabled as needed for maintenance or testing purposes. Each will also have its own status LED to indicate that it has been switched on and has power. For the main wiring from the battery to the fuse block and onto the motors, 12 gauge wire will be used. The circuit lengths involved are very short, so it should be sufficient for the load with only a tiny voltage drop. For the other branches, 14 gauge wire will be used since the loads are much smaller. Other wires for signals, such as for commanding the motor controllers or communication with the sensors, will be of smaller gauge wire. The wires will be bundled together using plastic split loom tubing, like this, for protection, and clips or other means will be used to secure the looms in place. A piece of plywood like this will be placed vertically behind the battery as an additional support and to provide a place for me to later mount the GPS receiver and safety beacon above the robot I will attach this pole. The plywood panel will be mounted to both it and the metal support bar something like this. The main 30 amp breaker will be placed above the battery and next to it the fuse block. This enclosure will be mounted above them serving to house my robot's embedded controller and other supporting electronics, providing protection from any outside elements. These Victor 884 motor controllers will be placed next to the enclosure to complete the layout. The various branch subsystem switches and indicator LEDs will be mounted to the enclosure, and cable glands, like these, will be used to provide access for signal and power wires to the controller and other electronics. Alright, well, do you notice anything different about the shop? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. First thing I gotta do here is, uh, well, basically, uh, I have to fabricate the uh, panel first. Uh, 
I've made some a little bit changes. I was looking at it last night and uh, looking over some things, and I've decided to make some uh, different, uh, some slight changes in the uh, layout of how the panel is going to be. Not too much different, but just a little bit. So um, let me uh, let me uh, kind of show you what that's going to be. So uh, let's see, yeah. So we got here. As you can see, um, we have, uh, it's kind of hard to do this. Let me see if I can get this, uh, change this around a little bit. Uh, one moment. All right. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so basically what we had before is I was, I had initially showed that this, uh, breaker was going to be over here and, uh, that the, uh, that the, uh, fuse, fuse uh, block was going to be like that. I decided to move it over here and the breaker over here because basically it'll be well it'll be easier it'll be better because my positive my positive terminal on my battery is here and I want it to run into the breaker and then from the breaker into the fuse and then from the fuses under here going into essentially it'll be, they'll all be going into the uh, into this enclosure here so uh yeah i'll be going into this enclosure you know this is hard doing with one hand uh from here to here positive to here out of here into the breaker from the or into the fuse box from the fuse box into the enclosure and then of course from the enclosure to the motor controllers it just uh seemed like it would be uh better overall uh just uh you know just a better arrangement uh, for routing of the wire wires and everything so uh, that's what I'm going to do I need to first uh, I need to first take this panel and uh, I need to square it up make sure it's all square want it, want it to be kind of nice and then I need to lay out the uh, lay out the lines for the uh, for where I'm gonna put things and everything uh, arrange everything and uh, then I'm probably going to round off these corners, get it all cleaned up, and, uh, you know, just make it look nice uh, for everything. Mark off the uh, holes that I need for the pole and for mounting down here. And, uh, you know, down here and the pole. And uh, then, uh, you know, then we'll go from there. So um, let me uh, go ahead and uh, get that started, and um, I'll be right back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got my initial holes laid out. Got right here initial holes for I don't know if you can see those dots <laughs> those are all the those are all where the holes are going to be I've got them uh, all marked out um, and kind of ready to go to drill uh, with the exception of the holes that are be down that'll be down here for the uh, support bar that'll hold this to the bottom uh, that'll hold the bottom of this to the support bar and the reason that is is because I need to actually <laughs> this is the thing with fabrication like I mentioned before I need to actually take that bar off of the robot and unfortunately that's also holding the motors on or at least partially uh, but I can it's, it shouldn't be too difficult to disassemble so I need to take that off in order to drill it out so that I can know where the holes are going to be and uh, that they'll be at the right position and everything and then I can reassemble it and um, at that point, put this in front of it um, and uh, mark the holes using the holes on the, uh, on the bar itself. And uh, that way I know that they'll be transferred properly and that they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be in the right positions for whenever I actually drill this out. So um, that's what I'm going to do next is uh, get, that, uh, get that bar taken off of, that, uh, off of the chassis and uh, then, then we can, uh, you know, then I can uh, drill that out and uh, transfer things over to this, and then we can drill this. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do that. All right. So uh, here I got uh, here I got the chassis, and I've got to remove this bar here. Now uh, these bolts here, these two here. Are holding on the uh, bracket for the motors um, and these are just screwed in onto the edges so 
Shouldn't be too much of a problem. I should I should just be able to unbolt it and uh, take it off. It should be fine. So um, let me uh, go ahead and get that started. All right, we'll take out these uh, outer ones first because they're the easiest. And they don't take much at all. nut on the other end so I'm just gonna have to loosen them up break loose that nut on the back side the other. All right, so have our bar. Now, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put these, uh, I'm going to put these nuts in the, I'm going to put these uh, nuts or these bolts back in place because we don't want to lose them. And that's how I always keep things in place or keep things from being lost that I take apart is uh, just uh, put them back in the holes where they go. And uh, then that way I don't lose them and I know where they go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I've got to uh, got to mark this bar where I want the holes at and go from there. So uh, let's get that done. here this is all uh, all in good spot right now okay so all right so have here the bar I don't know if you can see those marks or whatnot but I got one right here and then the one in the middle right here and then one on the other side right here and these are going to be positioned in about well, about an inch on each side of the uh, panel over there so um, I'm going to go ahead and drill this out and uh, then we can uh, put things back together and transfer the marks over and all that kind of stuff so um, I'll, uh, I'm going to get to that all right, so I'm just uh, marking these uh, marking these off. All right, now well, they're marked off. I'm over here and uh, show you the markings. So I've got them marked off there. You can see the uh, indentations from my uh, center punch. And I'm actually going to have to drill out this middle one all the way through because I need to uh, make this hole, hold, this, this will also hold the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, support pole, uh, this thing. I put it back here in my shop. Let's see. So, yeah, it'll be uh, holding this, this support pole. And this is going to go down in here now. You can kind of see that it doesn't quite fit. We're going to make it fit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill these holes out. And uh, then I'll be right back. So in order to drill these holes, I'm going to be using my uh, little drill press thing here. Because it worked well last time and it was quick. 
But as I showed last time, you can easily use just regular hand drills, uh, regular electric hand drills, to drill through the metal. It'll just be a little bit slower. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to give this another shot. And, uh, you know, just, uh, just uh, use it for what I, what I, you know, what I have it for. So, you know, we're going to uh, put this in here and uh, get it all going. All right, I got one last hole to make in this uh, support bar. So I'm gonna get that done, and then I'll show you what the support bar looks like. That's the end of that loudness. Well, for now. <laughs> Brush off this a little bit. All right. So, <laughs> forgot where my camera was. So there's the uh, bar, the center hole, um, all the way through. And the other two holes are just uh, halfway through because they don't need to go all the way through. And uh, that basically does it for that. So uh, now I'm going to reassemble the uh, chassis and then mark these holes onto the, uh, onto the board. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright, so we have, the, uh, we have the bar mounted back onto the chassis. Now what we're going to do is uh, position the uh, position the <laughs> the panel where it's supposed to go, and um, mark out uh, probably mark out the center hole first, and then we'll bolt it on. And that way it'll be nice and temporary bolted on, and it'll be uh, nice and steady so we can mark the other two holes because they're kind of difficult to get to. And then we'll drill those out, bolt it all up, or at least pretend to bolt it up or do something with it. All right, so I've got it together, at least temporarily. I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like. But uh, here it is. Got, bolt, got the bolts right there. You can see they're through the rail. And uh, what we gotta do now is drill out the rest of these holes and then uh, I believe the next step is to mount that pole, or at least build the pole. So um, we'll be getting to that and uh, drill out these holes, and then um, then uh, we'll mount. We'll uh, go from there. So see you back soon. All right. So uh, what I'm going to be doing uh, right now is uh, well modifying this uh, pole here for our support pole for the uh, for the beacon and for the uh, GPS unit. Um, I'm basically going to have a couple of handy, handy, handy little holes in it. This used to be a mop handle, um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's basically extremely thin wall, extremely thin wall steel tubing um, of a an appreciable diameter. And rather than throw it away, I decided to keep it. So I'm going to drill out this hole. This hole here, drill it out bigger to uh, to our quarter inch twenty uh, standard hardware. That one right there, and uh, drill it all the way through. Then I'm going to use a uh, I'm going to use a tubing cutter to cut off the cut off the end of it right about there, or I should say just above the uh, hole, and uh, then uh, then we'll uh, work on uh, basically squeezing it down to make it just slightly smaller to fit within the channel and uh, a little bit other modifications so it can fit around everything and uh, then uh, then I'll be able to uh, mark the hole on the other end from the panel and <laughs> drill that out and go from there so uh, let me uh, let me get all that set up and going 
All right, so for this, I just have it uh, clamped into uh, my workmate bench here, and I'm just going to be using my little battery powered drill. Doesn't really need much of anything. I've got a quarter inch bit in it. I'm just going to drill all the way through, and there's really not much to it. And that's basically it. So uh, we now have our hole that we need. I have to clean up the rough edges there, but uh, there's the uh, hole that we need all the way through. So, got to uh, trim this off with the uh, with the tubing tubing uh, cutter, and uh, this end here, from the hole down here up to here, that'll be our pole. So, uh, what I'm going to do is clean this up, and then uh, well, I can just do that right here with my I think my chamfer tool can probably take care of it and that does it right there very useful tool this chamfer tool clean that one up make sure it's all good all right yeah okay so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use this tubing cutter and I won't bore you with uh, with, with uh, showing you how it how it works and everything but it's just this uh, little copper meant for copper aluminum style tubing should go through this just fine since it's thin wall. I wouldn't want to use it on pipe or anything, but um, I'll uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, use it as you're supposed to, run it around and uh, get this thing trimmed up, and then I'll be right back. All right, so here's the tube now. Got it cut off on that end. Got a relatively sharp edge. I'm going to have to clean that up with a uh, file. And uh, then I'm going to take my vise and I'm going to squeeze this down just slightly so that it'll fit within that channel and uh, then we'll give it a test fit and see what other if any modifications we might have to make or whatnot and go from there so I'm going to get this all cleaned up and start working on it and then I'll show you the result alright so here I have the uh, fully modified uh, pole I ended up uh, cutting out the bottom, making it a U shape because there wasn't enough material to go underneath the bolt uh, that's in that channel in the middle there uh, because, uh, well, there just, just isn't enough room. So it doesn't really matter because this is meant to just go kind of, you know, keep it from moving side to side and that'll keep it like that. And with a bolt on the top, it'll be good. Got the uh, other hole right there. And um, you can see that. I've also squeezed it down, so there it is on that, but then, oh, not quite as wide. So, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, mount, mount this onto the, uh, onto the chassis to show you what it looks like. Alright, this panel's already mounted and everything, so all I'm going to do is just, uh, fit this in here. And it just slots in just like that. And then I have this, uh, I have this bolt, um, kind of similar to the one that's on the bottom, except I have a couple of washers that I'm going to use. One of them is to take up the space that's in between the panel and the pole because of the thickness of the channel. Uh, the other one is just as a little bit of backup because the wall of that tubing is so thin, and I just didn't want to. Uh, you know, didn't want to overstress it or anything, so just got this uh, extra one here. Doesn't cost me anything, so just uh, put it in here, slide it like that, go like that, kind of screw it in place a little bit, get it through the other side. All right, there we go. And now we just uh, take the uh, second washer, put it over, and uh, run this uh, run this uh, nut onto the end. And uh, that's basically that. Um, you know, we can uh, certainly tighten it up a little bit. And there you have it. That's the uh, pole. Let me uh, let me get you get 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 you a little close up here. So uh, one moment. All right. So here we go. There it is. 
the uh, bolt right there in the middle and then uh, the one up here you can see that uh, there's that uh, secondary washer there in the middle you know you can see how there's a little bit of space there because of the uh, because of the thickness of the channel right here so you know here's another another view what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, basically drill out all the rest of the holes on the uh, on the board, and uh, start to mount the uh, well mount the components on it. I'll uh, probably doing probably be doing most of that flat. Um, take it off this uh, take it off this chassis and uh, uh, just do it uh, just do it flat on the uh, on the workbench over here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show you the result of the uh, of the drill out and everything else. Oh, and uh, by the way, all the hardware that I'm using here again is uh, is a quarter inch twenty. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of standardizing on that for uh, these smaller robots. Um, the uh, the one thing though is that for the parts that uh, that are going to be going on here, such as the enclosure that's going here on the on the top and uh, the motor controllers and fuse fuse block and everything else. Um, I really, uh, I really can't use quarter inch 20 because the, the parts, well, they, they don't have holes that big and I don't want to modify them because they're not meant for that. So I'll be using smaller hardware on that and I don't think that's really going to be a big deal. Um, but, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep a standardized, uh, size here because it just makes things a little bit easier to, uh, figure out what you have and, and, uh, you know, basically keep things, uh, organized and everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing that and probably go up to the, I don't know exactly what the size is, but the coarse thread size for the three eighths for larger stuff, maybe if I get, if I get to building something larger and, uh, for smaller stuff, uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I think there's one that's called something like 10 32nd or something like that. Um, some smaller, uh, some slightly smaller thing. I actually might might actually make it as you see the, my, that erector set. I might uh, might standardize to whatever size the erector set is, because um, I'm sure I have a ton of those uh, little nuts and bolts. Um, so uh, let me uh, go ahead and drill that out, and uh, I'll show you. Oh, one other, one last other thing. Notice how the Notice how there's this head of the screw is well, it's above the surface of the uh, of the panel, and it's kind of in the way of the um, of the enclosure where the enclosure is going between these holes here. Um, going to be right here. What I'm going to have to do is uh, put the put the put the uh, enclosure on some small standoffs just to raise it above this uh, head, and I had anticipated that in the beginning anyhow. So uh, I'm going to do that and. Uh, show you uh show you what i have after that all right so uh here we have the board done the board done got all the holes drilled i don't know if you can see those holes but they're all there whoa anyhow um yeah and here's the other side this is one of the things i hate about this uh cabinet uh uh, what do you call it? Cabinet veneer stuff that I got. I forgot it from a local cabinet maker, kitchen cabinet maker guy. Gave it to me for free. So I can't complain too much, but it doesn't really drill very well. The only way I've ever had any uh, good luck with uh, getting holes and stuff in it without anything like that happening has been when I've used a laser cutter on it. <laughs> and uh, that actually worked really well. Unfortunately, I don't have one. <laughs> if anybody wants to sponsor me, and buy me one that'd be great <laughs> no okay so here we go um i'm going to uh now uh i've got everything all set up to mount uh, these stuff to it so i'm going to get to that and uh show you what this is going to be looking like oh, and i just wanted to show you this is the hardware that i'm using um and you can kind of see uh i don't know what size this is I, well i know that that the um that it's Five thirty seconds in diameter, at least the uh, the uh, shaft of the uh, of the bolt is. Um, but I don't know what the thread count is, and I'm going to have to look that up because honestly, I kind of like it. Um, it may become the next uh, standard for uh, my shop. Uh, maybe we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, I made some uh, made some standoffs here from these like little plastic rubber things. I don't know what they are. I just have them laying around, and. Uh, 
drill, drilled them out so that they could act as standoffs because they have one in blocked. And uh, yeah, I was going to use them for that. Uh, they raise it up just enough, and it's great. And uh, same here on my uh, on my uh, breaker here. Got the same kind of hardware. So going to be mounting this up. Get back to you and show you what it looks like. All right, so here everything is mounted onto the board just like that. And see that uh, our motor controllers there and the enclosure breaker. Fuse, fuse block, everything's all there. All we have to do now, well, we've got a lot of things left to do. <laughs> Let me be honest here. I need to still wire this up, obviously. Um, gonna wire up the uh, the electrical on it and everything. Um, and I gotta eventually mount it back onto the uh, onto the chassis. Um, but uh, before I can do that or uh, whatnot. Um, well, I gotta take the take the enclosure off so I can get to that bolt hole that's underneath there, uh, so I can attach to the to the uh, pole. And uh, the other thing is, is that anytime it's kind of a problem with this particular enclosure, but when everything's all put together, it won't matter as much because I'm not expecting to I'm not expecting to have to open it up that often. Basically, in order to open this enclosure. The screws are actually on the underside of this flange piece here. Uh, this top entire top comes off, um, and that makes it a, that makes it a little bit of a pain. But um, I've got some ideas there to uh, make it. Uh, well, it's always going to be a pain. Let me just be honest. Um, yeah. So uh, so yeah. So to get this uh, to get this uh, the next step that I want to do. Uh, before I start uh, mounting it up and everything, well, I'm gonna I gotta wire it and such. That's gonna be a real big job. Um, the other thing I have to do is I need to uh, make a make a mount or make a uh, not really a mount a uh, need, need to make a, uh, hold, a hold down hold down strap or a hold down bar. Actually, it's gonna be made with uh, this piece of aluminum. Notice these bolts. <laughs> these bolts are those ones that I modified for the uh, caster uh, caster thing. As I was digging through all my bolts and everything, cleaning that up, I actually found some bolts that uh, worked a lot better. They didn't need to be modified as far as you know shortening or anything. And I needed these bolts for the hold down strap. So I've got this piece of this piece of aluminum here. I got to drill one extra hole in it uh, in order to make it fit the battery. And then I got to drill a couple holes into the uh, into in, into the uh, sheet metal of, of the robot, and uh, then then I can uh, then I can mount the battery down just fine. So uh, what I'm going to do is get on to that, and uh, you know then uh, you know then later we'll be working on getting this thing wired up, and uh, you know well <laughs> I'll share with you whenever it gets to that point. So see you in a bit. Okay, so. There it is, in all its mocked-up glory. <laughs> um, let me, uh, yeah, I got the battery mounted. Got the, uh, got the hold-down strap done. Got all this mounted up, and I even went ahead and took things apart so I could mount the pole. This pole is, well, everything's pretty, pretty sturdy on here. Maybe a little wobbly. Not too bad, though. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. Um, and if it is, then, uh, well, we'll have to explore some other options. Um, I've got an idea that if I put some L brackets that went from these down to the board, and not hooked, hooked, I've got enough space right here. And, well, this one might be a little bit tight, but underneath the uh, breaker there. Um, or going down the other direction, too. That could be done. Um... All right, so I had kind of stupidly uh, let my phone run out of uh, power last night, and uh, so, well, I'm just going to continue where I was going with it. Uh, basically, I just wanted to show you a close-up of uh, what the uh, what the chassis now looks like with uh, everything attached to it, I guess. So, um, let's, uh, let's go look at that. All right, so, uh, yeah, here it is. Um, we got the chassis, we got the... Uh, 
battery mounted uh, with uh, with a custom hold down strap there. Uh, got some wing nuts so it's easy to uh, remove to uh, replace the battery. Um, got our uh, motor controllers and the enclosure and of course the breaker and the fuse block. And over on the other side, uh, well, we can see, uh, you know, see how it looks. Everything's there. This is a uh, relatively sturdy, just a little slight wobble. I don't know. I might, uh, I might down here. I might uh, actually uh, put some uh, L brackets or something to attach from here to the uh, to the to the board itself, and that should that might sturdy it up. I'll have to uh, maybe experiment with that. Um, but uh, overall, it's a uh, it's in a pretty good, uh, pretty good shape. Uh, what we're going to do next is actually, uh, well, start wiring things up. And uh, one of the first things that I um, that I'm going to uh, have to do is I've got to actually uh, lay out the layout and uh, fabricate the uh, panel that'll go on to this here. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is uh, kind of an old school style, uh, using a piece of uh, graph paper to lay out everything, and then. I'm going to probably, uh, well, I'm not sure just yet, but I'm going to put transfer that onto here. Um, probably uh, probably uh, transfer that onto here using, uh, using some uh, uh, spray glue or something, and then uh, poke the holes and everything, and then drill it all out, and that should, uh, that should cover it. So uh, let's get on to that. All right, I just uh, removed the uh, enclosure off of the panel, and I wanted to give a little shout out off of something, you might see it in the picture here, that I uh, just used, and I'm not being paid by this company or anything, but it's called the Magnetic Finger Tool. Here it is. And what's neat about this is that, uh, well, I had all these like small little screw, small little nuts on the end of, ends of these screws right here that held on the enclosure. And with the enclosure and everything, I didn't want to drop them and, you know, bounce on the floor and lose them and stuff. So I decided to try this thing. I've had it for a little while, and you know, I'll just now just decided to try it. Um, it works great. Uh, basically, uh, basically, it just, you know, attracts, your it attracts, you know, the nuts and bolts and stuff. So as you're like, you know, if I can just kind of show it here, you know, just get... Uh, you got things loose and, and there they go, you know. So the, the other nice thing about it is is that, uh, well, you know, if you're in a really tight spot, and that's kind of what I bought it for, mainly for automobile work and everything, is you could, you know, if you're in a tight spot where you need to start a nut or something and you can't even get a screwdriver in there, well, you know, you could just stick it on the end of your, of, of, of your finger and... Put it in there, you know, wherever it's at, even if it's, you know, even if you're blindly doing it. I mean, I've done it with tape and stuff, but this is infinitely easier. And, uh, yeah, it just works great. It worked great, you know, not losing anything, you know. So, you know, there you go. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's all I can say is, well, it's called Magnetic Finger. I think I found it on uh, Amazon or something. Um, you can go to magneticfinger.com. Like I said, I, I I think I picked this up cheaper than I could probably make it. I think that's the only reason why I, why I picked it up is because I, I couldn't do it any cheaper. You know, not without uh, sacrificing a glove or something. I didn't have a spare glove around. So, yeah, you know, if you're looking for something like that, give it a shot. Very basic, you know. Heck, if you got an old pair of gloves around, make one, I guess. Well, all right. So, yeah, I'm going to be uh, taking this back into, uh, into the office and... Uh, We'll uh, we'll uh, be you know laying out the panel on it and uh, you know show you what that all looks like. So let's go do it. All right. So the goal here is is I'm going to take this uh, I'm going to be taking this uh, enclosure and I'm going to uh, essentially first measure off how big this uh, area is, rough, a rough square. I'm not gonna, you can see it's kind of angled, but I'm not gonna worry about that. And then, you know, transfer it over to, uh, to this uh, graph paper here. And uh, then once I have this graph paper, I can then lay out my parts. Now, the way I'm looking at the thing, or the way I'm looking at uh, laying it out is kind of like this. Um, really rough drawing I made earlier. 
Got my left motor switch over here, right motor switch over here, subsystem switches down here, and then status LEDs and the fuse LEDs up here. And I laid it out for all six. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be doing all six or just, uh, you know, what's going to go on there. But uh, this is kind of how it's going to look. And, uh, you know, honestly, that's almost the same size. Just about where it wants. But, uh, yeah, this could have, you know, now I'm doing this, like I said, I'm doing this with uh, this quarter inch, uh, four squares per inch uh, graph paper. You could do it uh, with, you know, any other kind of graph paper you pretty much wanted to. You could also lay it out using, you know, something like Inkscape or some other vector drawing program or even a CAD package or whatever you have. But, uh, you know, and I could have did that kind of like how I, how I did with the uh, pegboard uh, layout things. But I wanted to give this a shot, you know, because this is a, you know, it's a little bit low tech. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's all you have and, you know, maybe you maybe, you know, maybe you're more comfortable drawing than you are, uh, you know, manipulating a graphic with a mouse or whatnot. And uh, this, you know, honestly, this takes a lot less time than, you know, futzing around with, oh, do I have the uh, grid size proper and how are things, you know. Yeah, it can just get to be a nightmare just using even just Inkscape. Uh, I know that from experience. But, um, yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and this is just a method that I want to show. And, you know, here's the switch I'm going to use for each of the motor switches. You can see, well, you can't quite see it, but it's a 35 amp switch. It's funny because the bottom says it's 50 amp, but it was marketed on, on the, on the uh, bubble, bubble card as 35 amp. I'm not sure what it is, but 35, that'll work for us. And then I've got these uh, smaller switches that I'm going to use for the uh, for the various subsystem switches. Now you know I'm going to be taking measurements using a simple cheap cheap plastic caliper and uh, caliper, sorry. And uh, then you know also my uh, hole guide. And uh, then I've got a you know a little uh, a little template here for you know I'm just going to use as uh, for mainly for the circles or something. I don't know. You know just a little some tools for drawing and uh, helping out. So. I'm going to get this done, and then I'll show you what the result looks like, and uh, then we can transfer it over to the transfer it over to the surface here with uh, you know with some you know some spray glue or something, and uh, mark it out and drill it out, and hopefully it'll look as good as it did on the paper. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you what's what it looks like afterward. Okay, so here you have the layout. Got uh, the various, uh, the two motor switches, one here and one here. Their status LED right here. The various fuse LEDs will go up here. The various subsystem LEDs, one through six here. And the various subsystem switches, which are these. These are the motor switches. Right here. Now, I don't, like, again, I said, I don't know if I'm going to put all of these switches or LEDs in place. Part of it's going to have to do with whether I have six of these. I know I have at least three. I'll have to check on that. There may be six out there. Um, and if there is, I'll put them all in place, even though even though I don't need them. It'll just look nice. And, uh, you know, hey, if you know if I happen to, uh, you know, expand this uh, particular robot, they'll be there for later. So um, what we're going to do now is well first I'm going to check and see what kind of switches I have see if I got six of those and then uh, we're going to transfer this drawing here this is going to be I'm going to call this my master drawing if you will my master and I'm going to transfer it over to another piece of paper another piece of graph paper here and uh, then that that particular copy will be glued onto the top of the enclosure and uh, one of the big things is, is I've got to remember that what is technically or looks like the bottom of the enclosure is actually the top that faces the pole, just like this, um, like that, uh, so that I don't uh, accidentally drill these holes wrong. Um, famous last words. So let's get on to that. All right, so uh, here's the uh, here's the box with the template on it. I had to make a side template for each side for centering a hole. Um, but here's the main template. Uh, 
Notice it's uh, relatively symmetrical. However, some of those holes need to be different sizes than others. And uh, they that also depends on, uh, well, which way it's facing. So I'm going to drill out the initial holes for this. And uh, then... Uh, and then we can uh, work on getting it uh, finished up. All right, so I have all my pilot holes drilled now. You can see I used my vise to hold it steady because I didn't want it wobbling around. And I used uh, my hand, my uh, hand drill, my hand power drill, I should say, uh, because uh, for these initial pilot holes, and probably for the remainder of the holes, except for maybe the large switches on each side. Those are probably going to have to be done uh, with a step-up drill or something. But uh, I did that because it allows a more fine control and everything. You can vary the speed it's just just a little bit better. Plus, with a smaller bit, you don't have to worry about breaking the bit or anything. And, um, you know, so, you know, I've got, uh, got these drilled out. Now I just have to uh, drill out the holes in the right sizes for everything else. And uh, then we can uh, start to, then we can uh, start placing parts and other stuff like that, and getting other things hooked up. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. All right. So here's the finished deal. Got all my holes drilled. Got these large ones here that I had to use this large step drill. Those are three quarter inch. <laughs> Necessary for uh, these. Um, uh, ew, I'm forgetting what they're called. Sucks to get old. Um, these uh, glands, cable glands, um, to fit these things in. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do that or not. All the others are. I also had to use step step drill, step bit. I also had to use this handy reamer thing. Uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, Holes were just slightly undersized for like fitting in these uh, LEDs. Uh, they didn't quite fit, but uh, you could take the reamer and uh, just put it in there and rotate it a little bit and enlarge the hole just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit so it fit through. Oh, and the other thing you might notice is these little holes down here underneath uh, where the uh, switches are supposed to go. I can show you the subsystem switches. There are these uh, little bitty switches right here. Um, what, uh, what, those, uh, what those little holes are for are for these things. I don't know if I'll be able to show it to you as good as well as I w would like, but see a little tab on the end? And then there's like a little uh, tab on the inside. When it go this th these are like little washers that go around the like go around the switch and the switch has a uh, if I can find it there right there on that side there's a slot that runs down the length of the uh, of the threaded part of the switch and that slot fits this inner fits that inner oh <laughs> don't want to lose that fits that little inner uh, inner tab. And then the outer tab has to go into something, so that the t so that these uh, switches they can't turn as you you know once you tighten them down. Even if they're tightened down, they still want them every you know they want to get loose and turn. That's to prevent them from turning. And uh, so it need a little bitty hole for that little little thing. And those aren't actually holes; they're actually divots. They don't go all the way through. So uh, so yeah, um, that pretty much covers it for. Uh, for the fabrication of this enclosure. Um, the next step is going to be, well, wiring things up. Uh, I've got to also uh, build a, a little uh, voltage regulator board uh, to go in there. Um, but uh, yeah, the main thing is wiring up uh, all everything and uh, getting the LEDs and all that stuff put into place and making it look nice. So uh, we'll be doing that next. Okay, so now that we have our holes drilled, uh, the fun putt part start, starts. I've got to remove those uh, those uh, templates off, and uh, they're held on there with uh, some spray glue that I ha that I had. And uh, I think I'm gonna well, I'm gonna have to try both rubbing alcohol and Goo Gone and see if that works. Hopefully, I don't need anything 
harsher than that because that box I think is just ABS and I don't want it melting so we'll give it a shot and I'll let you know how it goes and if it goes well well I'll show you what the results are so if it doesn't go well I'll show you what the results are too it might be an interesting mess so see you soon all right there's a result of uh, taking one of the end uh, in in panel templates off and it's kind of messy as you can see I uh, got a little pile there uh, I'm gonna see what I can do to uh, using some of these solvents see what uh, see what actually happens uh, before I go removing anything else so uh, let's give that a shot all right so uh, what I found out was that Gugon works beautifully and allowed me to get two sides pretty much perfect but what I found out was is that the best way to do things see this one right here came off completely clean all I did was basically soak it with a cup with wiping it down with uh, Goo Gone wiping down the surface with Goo Gone and then uh, letting it sit for a little bit only about maybe 30 seconds and then just lifted right off and then I was able to just wipe away the rest and uh, looked good so that's what I'm gonna do with the main piece here and uh, show you what it looks like afterward so this is what it looks like after wiping it down with the goo gone and I'm just gonna let it sit here for a little bit and then it should just peel right off so uh, you know, heck might even peel right off right now oh there we go just like that so I'm gonna finish this off pull it off and then uh, clean everything up and uh, that should do it all right so there it is all cleaned up took some uh, rubbing alcohol that I had out which didn't work to do anything to the goo, to the goo that was on there only goo gone got it out but uh, took some rubbing alcohol and uh, cleaned off the uh, goo gone because it leaves like uh, uh, it's like oily um, I imagine it's some kind of weird uh, petroleum or something product I don't know <laughs> And uh, that cleaned it all up, and well, there it is. There, there is our enclosure ready to receive switches and LEDs and all kinds of other good stuff. So, uh, where we're going to go next is to actually, uh, well, start wiring stuff up and uh, putting the stuff into this for power and uh, basically getting the power all situated before we actually implement all the electronics and controller and everything else so uh, let's get on it okay so I finished crimping up the main wiring for the uh, system roughly from left to right you have the uh, fuse block wires wire that uh, goes between the breaker and the battery and then you have uh, the two wires that go between the fuse block and the switches. Then the two wires that go from the fuse block to the various uh, accessory or subsystems. And then two wires that go from the switches to the motor controllers. And finally, the two last two are black wires. Uh, ground, ground leads from the motor controllers back to the battery. I don't have any connectors on the ends of those because I'm not exactly sure how long I need them. Um, so once I get everything hooked hooked up and assembled and put back onto the chassis, then I'll know exactly where to trim those off. So that basically does it for those wires. I will then be hooking them up to everything here. And uh, then I also have to uh, create all the LEDs and resistors and solder all that up so I'm gonna be doing that next and uh, we'll return back whenever I get done with that alright so here are the uh, various assemblies uh, for the enclosure we got uh, right here the LEDs for the fuses these red ones we got uh, these green ones here which are for the subsystems and then we have uh, one subsystem switch here and another one right here and then these two yellow LEDs are for the main switches 
Now you may, may notice that I don't have all the switches hooked up and that's because I'm not going to need them all. These others are just going to be kind of dummy switches. So they'll be there for the future but uh, for right now they're just going to act as placeholders and close up the holes in the uh, enclosure. So let's see if we can get this uh, get this thing assembled. All right, so here is our uh, finished enclosure with all the switches, all the LEDs, all the wiring. More or less ready to go. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Not bad for freehanding, but uh, let's look inside because uh, <laughs> this is one of these things. It's like, uh, yeah, pretty nice, eh? Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Oh man. All right. It looks worse than it actually is. These are all the wires and everything, you know. A lot of hot glue holding things together. A few wire nuts. Got some uh a few loose wires that aren't uh, hooked up to anything yet. They'll be going, you know, like these uh, servo control cables. They'll be going to the controller and uh then these are the sub subsystem power lines this yellow one this red one and this uh, yellow one here they're not going anywhere just yet but they will providing power to a couple things yeah but uh yeah that's uh that's what we have uh i had to i ended up i couldn't use the uh i couldn't use the cable glands i ended up having to actually uh actually uh using grommets um because uh the cable glands i well I'll be honest. I didn't. Uh, I didn't measure things out quite properly, and they extended out too far, and were running into on one side the fuse block, and on the other side the uh, motor controllers. Uh, really would have needed a, a, a wider, a wider uh, piece of plywood uh, to make that actually work. But uh, overall, yeah, there it is. So uh, we've got some rooms or some sw extra switches. Uh, right now, the only the only uh, two accessory switches that work are this one and this one here. Uh, these two control the left and the right motors, or give them power, I should say. Um, but overall, you know, we've got uh, got uh, four other switches. If we wanted to add more accessories, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to get them in there because. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can see that hooking up the LEDs and hooking up the switches, well, it was easy to do it on those first two. I probably, yeah, if I had, if I had a choice on, uh, if I had, if I, if I had, if I was going to do this differently, and I'll just let you guys know, if I was going to do this differently, number one, I probably would have chosen a much larger enclosure. Uh, with this, uh, I did not really anticipate that there'd be as much wiring as there would be, but a larger enclosure would have helped that. Um, and I might have spaced things out a little bit more um, and probably wouldn't have done this uh, kind of uh, bus-driven uh, ground lines on each of the LED, uh, each of the LED arrays. Um, I probably would have brought all the all the individual wires out. It probably it just it just would have probably worked better um, for future maintenance. But at the same time, I'm not sure if if this will be expanded or not. But the option is there, however difficult it is. So what I'm going to do now is uh, get this all hooked back up onto the panel, and uh, I'll show you what it all looks like and uh, show you some tests of the uh, power and the controls and everything to uh, give you an idea of what's going on. So uh, let's do that. All right, so here's the finished article. Um, right now, I'm just gonna show you how, it, how it's all gonna function and everything. I got it, amazingly enough, running off of just a nine volt battery. Uh, I don't have my uh, actual battery yet, uh, so, uh, can't really use it. Plus, this is a little bit safer in case you know something went wrong. I didn't want to catch things on fire because with a uh, with a full gel cell, if there was if there was a problem and for some reason the fuses didn't work, well, 
there'd be issues. So, first off is uh, turning this thing on, and that's done by using the uh, switch on the breaker. So, turn it on, you can see that we have four lights out of six, because there are only four fuses um, hooked up right now, and these show the status of the fuses, so that if, uh, you know, if for instance, uh, I can simulate this, if one of them should happen to blow, oh, it blew. Ah, hell. Cheap fuse. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'll just pull out the, the bit. Oh, there it goes. All right. So that's what I was attempting to then. This, man, talk about a cheap. This is what you get for buying junk. And that's my own fault. I, I, I should buy some, I don't know. I should buy something a little bit more quality, I guess. Crazy stuff. All right. So putting this back in. There we go. This thing doesn't want to. There we go. All right, so we got our we got our power back, and uh, put our cover back on. All right, so um, first off, we can uh, turn on each motor. This one's uh, for the left motor. This one's for the right motor. So we turn it on. You can see a light comes on, and you can see that this. Uh, Motor controller over here is uh, turned on, fans running. Kind of shows you a little bit about uh, how uh, little current these uh, motor controllers use when they're just in standby mode, which that's basically blinking, saying it doesn't have a uh, PWM si signal coming in through the uh, RC or anything, which makes sense. And uh, we can turn on the other one, and you can see it's spinning up, spinning up uh, that uh, particular thing. So these switches allow us to essentially control portions of the system what's on and what's off so that we can do testing or whatnot so if I wanted to say just run the micro run the embedded system microcontroller whatever I can do that without enabling any of the motors or anything um, or if I you know just as a safety kind of precaution um, or if I wanted to uh, test just the just these and nothing else well I could do that as well um, so we have two switches that uh, are for the subsystems that turns on one and the other one turns on like that so uh, these uh, these are meant for uh, one of them at least is going to be for the mic for the uh, embedded system and the other one's going to actually uh, uh, turn on the uh, sensors and whatnot so uh, that's basically that's basically how it works. And uh, whenever we want to turn the uh, whenever we want to turn the system completely off, if there was like some reason, you know, that we had to oh real quick turn it off, we can just hit the breaker, and off it goes. So that basically is it. And uh, what I'm going to do is put this uh, back in place on the uh, chassis and uh, show you what it looks like uh, with the uh, battery in place, uh, the uh, dead battery I have that I'm using as a stand-in. Um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, just get an idea of what it, what it, really, what it really all looks like. So uh, let's go do that. All right, so uh, here's what it looks like all mounted onto the chassis. You can see it's kind of sort of hooked up to the... Uh, stand-in battery but uh yeah that's uh that's basically it we uh, we still have to uh hook up the motors uh got to build the cables for that so i'll be doing that uh before the next video and uh then uh then then we should be good to go uh after the next video to uh start doing programming and whatnot on this thing so uh there you have it now that we have our power requirements met we'll move on to mounting and hooking up the embedded controller sensors and other things to complete our follow me robot so be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to my channel to receive notifications about future videos in this tutorial and while you're down there hit that like button 
Also, be sure to check out the Junkbotics GitHub repository for more information about this tutorial and other projects. Thank you again for watching, and remember, keep calm and keep junkin'. Thank you.